Um, recap a little bit from Friday too. Uh, this is where we left off, I think, right? We came up with, and then the bell rang, I think. We finally did it. We came up with a power series for sine x. In fact, I used it right here as if we all knew it, right? So, by the way, this is one that you can like just add in your catalog. If anyone asks you for sine x, the power series for sine x again, like you can just know that it's this. Um, you don't have to redirect. Well, reading I mean, is not hard, as you saw. It's just taking the derivative of sine x is, is rather fun, actually. Now, if you were to come up with a rule for this, if someone just showed you this series, forget the rest of the context, if someone just showed you this series and asked you to write a rule for that, this is maybe what you would write. I don't know if you're going to like this or not, but I have it written on the board over here, too. So. Right? Do those things say the same thing, that and this? The thing I see, don't you, is odd powers, right? How do I get the odd numbers? It's x to the what? Does 2n plus 1 give the odd numbers starting with n equals 0? Plug in 0, plug in 1, plug in 2, and see that you're getting the same thing as over here. Obviously, this needs to match that power. So we also have a 2n plus 1 factorial. And then just let's just verify that negative 1 to the n does, in fact, give a positive and then negative, positive, negative coefficient that we need here. So that's a compact way to write that. Um, and you'll see that sometimes written in that compact way. So I just want to make sure you're clear. That's a good way to write it, too. By the way, what's the fourth order Taylor polynomial for sine x? I just want to make sure you're clear. Because a lot of times um, when we write, like, what's the fourth order uh, Taylor polynomial. A lot of times we're thinking, oh, we mean like n equals 4. But just be careful because over here, if n equals 4 actually corresponds to the which, which order Taylor polynomial? It actually be the seventh order. So if someone asks you the, seventh, the, the fourth order Taylor polynomial for sine x, um, uh, you actually want for the fourth order Taylor polynomial what here? What I already have, except, well, not really. This is not fourth order. Oh, actually, no. No? By fourth order, I literally mean, like, degree four polynomial, right? How do you do that? Well, there isn't a degree four polynomial. It's a we have, question. Yeah, that would be it, right? In fact, P3 and P4 are the same for sine x. Just keep in mind where we came from. Keep in mind where we came from. The fourth order term, this, this, this is how you find the fourth order Taylor polynomial. You do this, plus one more term, right? It's just the next term is zero, isn't it? So I just want you to see that that, 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 that gets a little tricky where when coefficients, when, um, coefficients are zero and terms drop out. Um, so there are a couple different ways people will ask this. They might also ask for this instead. They might say, give the first two non-zero terms of the series, in which case this would also be the answer, right? You can see why we say the first two non-zero terms. Because if someone said the first two terms, you might be just tempted to say, oh, you mean 0 plus 1x? There you go. That's not really what we wanted. We want like the first two like real terms. So a lot of times we'll say the first two non-zero terms or something. Use the first two, uh, two non-zero terms of sine x to approximate sine of 0.3 or something. Well, that, they mean use this. Use this cubic to, to approximate it. Um, uh, the other thing I should say, too, is what's the first order uh, approximation of sine x? I feel like we've talked about this before. This is the linearization, right? And I hope you see again that this is the, like, sine x for, very sm very for values close to the center, x equals 0, for values close to 0, sine x is approximately just equal to x, right? Have we talked about that before? I feel like sometimes, um, especially physicists, call that the small angle approximation, right? Sine x is, like, if you type into your calculator sine of 0.1, I guarantee you'll get something very close to 0.1, right? So that's, that, that also is shown forth for us, for us um, from the power series. We see, we see it all, don't we? Um, this is, uh, we can prove using a, 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 a thing we'll learn later this week here, on Wednesday is when we're going to do the ratio test. Um, but we can actually prove that this converges for all
all real numbers. So where at, early on, I think, notice we haven't recently, we haven't recently talked about where these things converge. When we were doing geometric, we did. But right now, we haven't really talked about when these Taylor series converge. You know, and so sometimes it's on a short interval, but incredibly for one like this, it does converge for all real numbers. Wow. And I'll just remind you too that this is easy to remember if, if you do want to just memorize this somehow, or you can rederive it, like I said, anytime you need it. Sine x equals this. Well, of course that makes sense. Sine, you know, is an odd function. Of course, it's, of course it should be made up by odd degree polynomials, right? The symmetry of this should equal the symmetry of this. If you plug in zero to one, you should get zero in the other. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, you do, right? Cool stuff, right? Okay. Uh, let's not do that one. Okay. Um, I feel like there's something else I was going to say about that. I don't know. I'll think about it. Okay. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program here. Um, just to the recall, too, um, I, don't, I guess you did in the warm up today, too, these two names and these two pictures. I thought you might need to see them again. Do you, do you want to see these guys again? You're welcome. Okay. Um, so, uh, just so you know that whenever we ask for those things, that's what we mean, of course. So let's try constructing a power series for sine x again, like we were just talking about. But this time centered somewhere else, just for fun. See how, see how this goes. How about I give you a minute to do it yourself? We'll come back together in approximately two minutes. Again, taking derivatives of sine x is fun, right? So I'll write those up here again. They're the same derivatives as we had before. Interestingly, they don't. Some of them don't go to zero, though, right? I mean, these are a little, a little bit trickier. Huh? Centering at this at zero was nice, wasn't it?
Oh, I think I get the pattern now. Yeah? Okay. So I think we're ready to do it. So, <clears throat> how does this go? F of pi over 3. plus f prime of pi over 3 divided by 1 factorial times x minus pi over 3 to the first plus f double prime of pi over 3 over 2 factorial. How'd you do? Is this looking like what you had so far? Uh, let's do one more term here. Minus 1 half over 3 factorial times x minus. We can simplify maybe as well. Plus dot dot dot. <clears throat> it does make me think though, like, is there a tidy, is there like a tidy way to write, I think I'll simplify. But I don't think, I'm just looking at this where it is right now because like Alex and I were talking about earlier, is there like a really nice way to look at this and just know what the, come up with like an N rule for this? I'm, I'm, and I'm feeling like the answer is kind of not, not very easily is the answer. Uh, I guess I could come up with a rule that like gives a rule for the even terms and a rule for the odd terms, right? You have like a piecewise defined power series. I'm just not really interested in doing that is all, right? So we'll just leave it like this with triple dots and say that we did it. Um, but if you really, really wanted, maybe you could come up with, um, maybe you could come up with a rule for this. Is that one over 12? Plus dot, 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 okay. So I think I'm gonna just leave it at that. Those are the first terms. And if you wanted to have more, I would give you more if you wanted them, right? I, I, do, I do have a way of getting more if I want more. It's not like I don't know. That's not what the dot, dot, dot means. Okay. <clears throat> Let's construct two power series for E to the X. Yeah. So, when says, oh. Like, don't do that yet. Don't do that yet. Let's uh, talk some um, more about this. Yeah. Is it conventional to write it out in the third order? No, I just ran out of space on the Promethean board. Like, like the board Did they that? often do that too or something? Like, there were a couple problems where, where it was considered We can ask you to stop wherever we like, I guess. But yeah. You're there's not nothing. Make us go to like it's just like you're you're uh, like how fast do you get tired of it? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how to go further then, Mo? Yeah. If you wanted to, Sam. Well, yeah, Perfect. Like, on a test, like, you have to do like, now, like, I think it's just a good. I, I don't know. Third, yeah, we'll 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 ask second, third, or fourth probably. You know, usually or something something along those lines. Mainly because like, what benefit does it have for me and you? Like as far as you demonstrating your knowledge to me, I just want you to like understand. I want to know as a teacher that like, you know how to do it, right? I don't need to like waste your time though. <laughs> Give the first 27 <laughs> terms of the power series, like, okay, <laughs> see, you, see you later, you know. Um, I thought I'd, I, I think, it's, it, I think it's visually evocative to actually see this happen. So um, are you ready to see the power series for, for sine, converge to sine? We'll call it P of X, how about? Um, so already, already it's really good, right? That looks great. Doesn't it look good? Isn't that great? Yeah. It's so good. Oh my goodness, it's so good. You can do this at home. I mean, it converges well, right? Oh, whoa. I mean, keep in mind, I, I think you lose sight of the fact that the blue thing is a polynomial, polynomial you guys. But you would you wouldn't even be able to tell them apart on the interval negative pi to pi here, for and I only I'm only using the first couple terms here really. Um, let's see if we can make Desmos do more. Are you ready? This is this will be fun. From what what do we say from zero to uh, let's make it m, okay? Um, what was it negative one 
to the n times 2n plus 1 to the, just kidding, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. And then it's like, what's m? I don't know. Make it something. Let's make nd 0 and, uh, I don't know, we don't want to get too carried away. Yeah, 1,000. Okay. All right, so this is this will be fun because uh, at any time you want to automate something in Mac, you want to you want to make this. Now, is, was it stepping by? Is it? Can I? So there are the first ten tur. Whoa. There are the first sixty terms. Whoa, whoa, it's breaking. Excuse me, it's bre breaking Desmos. One second. Uh. All right, let's not go up to a thousand. It's already breaking it. Um, but you can see. I have it going up to, to the first 60 terms of this series, non-zero terms of this series. And our, isn't that incredible? Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. So the thing we just, we, the thing we, we, we've been just generating now on the slide here is a power series that would start converging around pi over 3. Immediately, with only one term of the series, it would agree right away at pi, at pi over 3, perfectly. Uh, but then it would converge around pi over 3 very quickly, around that place. So one reason, by the way, that you might like uh, a power series that converges around a different place is because, I don't know, the, it, the application you currently have is that like you care about values near that place, right? So in fact, I in some ways, you might think, like, why do we need a power series when, when um, we have the actual function cosine or whatever? So I, I guess I should ask you, like, how does your calculator even do it? How does it calculate the value of cosine for, for interesting values that are, are not are not nice ones, right? How, how does it even do it? Let me let me just tell you this. It uses an approximation technique, right? So if you care, if you're the kind of person who cares what's under the hood, or you're the kind of person who's actually designing from scratch some kind of a system that actually calculates the cosine, you might have to think like, I think you're begging the question if you're thinking like, well, my calculator can do that. Well, how does your calculator do that, right? And, and, and we're looking at, we're, we're getting to look under the hood, aren't we, a little bit? Okay. So e to the x, uh, I think, is an exciting one to do as well. Are you already having fun? People who are doing x equals 0 are probably already done. All right? Aren't you already done? I love taking derivatives e to the x. Love it. And so on. And if we're at 0, we get 1 and 1 and ah, I'm, I'm loving this. OK. So if we're, let's say, at x equals 0, if we're centered at x equals 0, what is the power series, simply? f of x equals the power series is 1 plus yeah, 1 times x, we're centered at 0, so 1 over 1 factorial times x minus 0, or just x, it's fine, plus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared, so we have, yes? Yes, yeah, so 1 half x squared, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, so notice we're just getting, since the derivatives are all 1, our Taylor polynomial is simply what? Yeah, x to the n, the rule couldn't be simpler, over n factorial. I apologize for that line there. Thank you. So x to the n over n factorial, starting with n equals 0, I guess, right? It's infinity. So the power series for e to the x is just beautiful, isn't it? Um, by the way, that's a thing that is written in our hallway, up, uh, uh, painted up there. One of the definitions, some people even think of that as one of the definitions of E, that it's the, this power series. Can you just verify quickly that if you, what do you get when you take the derivative of this polynomial? Try it, try it. 1 plus, that's x squared over 2, so that's that 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus 
I mean, it should be, right? I'm just, just checking, reality check. So, um, so yeah, it also seems to be exhibiting the same properties we know and love about E to the X. That its derivative is itself. That infinite polynomial has its, as its derivative, it's the same polynomial. Yeah, you can take derivatives of that thing all day. But yeah, that's so, so great. All right, that centered it. Uh, x equals, what are we doing? 1? I need to evaluate these things at 1. So what do we got? E. Oops. That's a just one prime here. E. It's E, though, right? It's all, it's all E, right? So what do we get? E plus E times x plus E over 2 factorial times x to the second, right, etc. right? Uh, I'm sorry. I made the mistake. I told you that. Uh, I, that oh, man. It's like my first time doing calculus. Okay. x minus 1. x minus 1 squared. There we go. That looks better. So can you center it elsewhere? Sure. Yeah. Any, any comments about that before we move on? We get to like just blow your mind on every slide. I just think this is so great. OK. Um, so uh, how about cosine? We just haven't seen that yet. So let's just quickly construct a power series for, for cosine as well. There are, no, there are no huge surprises here. This also comes out in, in a in similar manner to sine. It's also kind of beautiful in a similar way. In fact, you might already have a prediction as to what it will look like. I heard a, a prediction that makes sense to me just now. Uh, what is that, negative cosine? Do you want to do it at zero? I do. OK. If it says construct a power series for this function, then do it at the most convenient place in your mind, You know, whatever that might be. I think zero is my choice, for sure. Uh, zero. So f of zero is what? If you just plug zero into the function itself, you get f prime of zero is zero for all of these guys f double prime of 0 is negative 1. Does this feel familiar? It feels like what we did before. We get 1. This time we start, though. It's, it's in a different order, but we get 1, and then 0, negative 1, 0, and then repeat 1, 0, negative 1, 0, etc. So the power series comes out to be what? 1. Let's just skip this term here, the, the, the first order term. Minus. Yeah, x squared over 2 factorial. Maybe we do need another derivative here. What's the next one going to be? It's going to be 1, right? Plus 1 over, this guy's gone, right? Our x cubed over 3 factorial doesn't show up in this, right? So what's the next one? x to the 4th over 4 factorial. I think, like I said earlier, I heard someone making a prediction about this. Um, can we write a rule for this? I have it on the. I think I have it on one of the slides here too. So yeah, it makes sense. It's an even function. We get this. We get the, all the. Oh, by the way, another fun thing to do is to take the derivative of this. What should you get? Do you get negative sine x? Don't you? Do you get the power series? Which makes me think that if we have one other way of getting this power series, it would have just been to take sine x, which we already have the power series for. And take its derivative. Boom, power series for cosine x, right? You see, and, and, and I'd love to hack my way into these as often as possible, actually. Um, so with that in mind, actually, maybe we should actually kind of hack our way into some of these, like cosine of 2x. OK, whew, we got the chain rule then. Every time we got a 2 coming out, all right, so the first derivative is going to be negative sine of 2x, oh wait, times 2. The second derivative will be. Or, wait, hold up. I know the power series for cosine x, don't I? Well, no. 
If I know the power series for cosine of u, what's the, I mean, all, all we're saying is, that isn't this the thing that we just derived on the previous slide? The cosine of smiley face is equal to 1 minus smiley face squared over 2 factorial plus smiley face to the fourth over 4 factorial, etc. for whatever you choose smiley face to be, right? Would you like smiley face to be, oh, I don't know. You want to make it what? No, no, no. What do you want to make it? 2x. So I think once we make that substitution, we're just, we're just done, right? Now, I shouldn't say we're just done. We have, we have it. We need, to, we need to ensure that we can you know, pull out the 2. But. Minus whatever. OK. So, so that is a, a correct power series for this. You can also go around the other way and actually use, use the definition of the tail expansion to get this, too. Um, but yeah, let's just write this a little more cleanly. We have what? 1 minus 4 over 2 factorial, which is just two if you want to simplify it further. I just want to make sure you're, you're in the end proving that this really is a power series. Is this stuff times x to the power, uh, to the integer power, you know? Um, it, it is, of course, right? So what do we have? 16 over 4 factorial x to the fourth. All right, so we do have a power series here. Feel free to simplify some more if you like. Or even come up with a rule. That would be good, too. Maybe we, well, maybe we should do that. Um, We'll come back and do the rule in a second here. Let's let's hit this one too. How can we get this? Keep in mind that this, if we actually use, if we actually, it will work. But if we actually use uh, the uh, the Taylor series expansion, right? That means we need to like start taking a whole bunch of derivatives of this. And taking derivatives of this does not sound like fun to me, right? I agree too. Right? So, but. But we can do this, right? It's just x times cosine x, which is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Do you see how hacking a known power series is a, a great tool, right? So what do we get? Here's the power series for x cosine x. And you can verify it using the long way of doing it, too. But this will save us a lot of time here, just to write x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, etc. Mm -mm. So not only are we wanting to have you get better at the stuff you did on the homework today. That's what I'm yeah, sorry. Um, so I, I want you to get certainly better, like you did on Friday, with actually making these power series from scratch. But I also want you to like be, be you know, the lazy mathematicians that you are, right? Like, like embrace that. I mean, we don't want to. If we have a previous result, we can like rest upon. Well, let's use it, right? It provides a much quicker route. Seriously, try this using just the from scratch method of building power series and compare the amount of energy it takes to do one versus the other. Okay. Um, I, I, I would be nice to write the rule for these. I just wanted to, to tell you that these power series um, are, are in your book. Okay? I think I have it on now. Here are the ones we've recently derived. The geometric series, e to the x we did today, sine x we did on Friday, cosine x we did just now. And there are, there are others on a table on page 491 of your book, including including the ones I have on the slide. There's nothing special about this slide. It has these plus a couple other ones like the natural log of 1 plus x, which we actually did that one too. Um, so there are a couple other ones. Um, I've also in indicated the interval of convergence for these ones. Yeah. yeah, I think you already do though, don't you? Yeah. Go. What's the power series for e to the x? I think you get it right if I ask you right now, wouldn't you? 1 plus x Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You got it. So I don't know how much there is to memorize, really. All right, you guys are going to be just perfect for homework six tonight. Have a great time. Um, I will make a new seating chart soon, I promise. I know you want to move around. See you guys tomorrow. Five A plus will hunt starts for lunch. Are you so excited? I know I am.